So good morning. My name is Danny Fitzgerald. I'm the regional director for the San Diego Imperial Small Business Development Center Network. Of course, we are a resource partner of the U.S. Small Business Administration, as well as uh, the state of California through the Governor's Office of, of Business and Economic Development and the Office of the Small Business Advocate. So we are happy to have today uh, our monthly Connecting with Capital, Meet the Lenders, uh, to be able to kind of discuss some, some lending because we know it's an ever-changing market and we truly appreciate and, uh, and enjoy these calls on a, on a monthly basis. And as always, appreciate our panelists and the opportunity to be able to provide updates uh, to each of you as well. So we certainly do, do appreciate all of you for, for everything that you certainly are able to do. So um, with today, we're going to have a great panel. And uh, but first, we're going to get have a couple of quick updates in, in terms of a few things. And so um, I'm actually going to first throw it to uh, Lucy Montgomery from the U.S. Small Business Administration. I know they've had a lot of different programs. Uh, nothing in particular is open now, but I know there's still a bit of cleanup. So, so Lucy, you go you can go ahead. Great. Thank you so much, um, Danny. I do want to let you know that uh, most of the de direct disaster uh, assistance lending um, is closed for new applications. Uh, the, uh, the economic injury disaster loan is open uh, for increases, uh, though that is only until the funds uh, are no longer available, which we expect maybe one more month. If you have not done your increase for your economic injury disaster loan, uh, I would recommend you do that as soon as possible. I also um, uh, wanted you to know that there is some news on idle loans. If you have an idle loan, the deferment period has now been increased six additional months. So a total of 30 months uh, now deferment on your payment on your idle loan. I also wanted to let you know that you may have met us, the SBA through COVID. Um, and, but you might not be aware that, that the SBA does have other business funding. If you did not rate the idle loan uh, because your business is new or uh, for whatever reason, um, then, or you wanna use the funds for expanding, which is a, not a permissible use for an idle loan. I wanna let you know that the SBA doesn't do direct lending now. We do do lending through our men, member partners. And we wanted to encourage you um, for non-disaster lending, to get in touch with these vendor par partners for SBA or non-SBA loans and um, th that work best for you. That th There is a spectrum of lending, their funding is available to you. And that's why the SBA has a, been encouraging this particular seminar uh, to help you pivot beyond COVID now to growing and expanding your business. And uh, we want you to speak to your advisor at your SBDC, or if you are uh, ready to speak to some of these lenders who have taken their time to help you. So for all that I have recommended to come to this, welcome, you, you talk to me directly. And um, that is the update from the SBA. So keep, keep on using this SBDC, keep on growing and expanding, and uh, we're happy to be here for you. Thank you very much, Lucy. So appreciate those updates. I think there are some, some critical things, especially in terms of the economic injury disaster loan. We know that, uh, you know, there's, you know, within our region, obviously thousands of businesses received it nationwide, millions of businesses received it. And it's important to kind of track that and understand that there were changes that, that are happening with, uh, with, you know, with the rules and the regulations related to that. So, so certainly appreciate her. Um, in terms of uh, the only other kind of COVID relief update is, uh, is just going to be very brief. Um, I, I, we uh, will go ahead and put in there. I'll actually, uh, Ali, if you wouldn't mind putting the link in for the County of San Diego micro business grant into the into the chat. Um, this is a very specific, very narrow one. It's, uh, it is for the smallest of the small businesses. So this may not apply to anyone on the call, but certainly to, to refer folks. And so this is for businesses that were in business still in 2019, prior to December 1st, 2019, but in 2019 had less than 50,000 in revenue and are still open today. Uh, so that you can you can go ahead and get a grant. You also must be in, in the county of San Diego. It's only eligible for county of San Diego businesses. So if you are in uh, another state, so so Fred, you can't apply. You're in Florida. Um, so yeah, so certainly that 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 would work that way. So, um, but do absolutely you know. So Gally went ahead and put that in there. You can feel free to uh, to refer folks to that if they need some assistance. Uh, there's there's information as to office hours uh, for that as well. So uh, certainly do appreciate that. Uh, we were going to have a guest from uh, the, the county, but uh, Jordan unfortunately could not make it this morning. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started with uh, with our panel. 
and go ahead and letting everybody, uh, you know, as always, our first question is just introduce yourself, uh, who you are, what bank you, you're from, and then we'll get rolling into questions. So, so why don't we start with someone new for, for a panel, uh, Juan from Banner Bank. Uh, good morning, everyone. Juan Garcia, Banner Bank, branch manager here in Chula Vista. Uh, Banner Bank, uh, we've been around for about 130 years, based out of the state of Washington and here in California, probably for about the last uh, seven years or so. Fantastic. And then what about you, Juliet? Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Juliet. I am a business development officer with Accessity. We are an alternative lending organization, mission-based lender. We really want to help individuals who lack access to traditional forms of credit um, and capital, I should say. And we do loans up to $100,000 with our regular loan program. And we do have a COVID relief loan program that's available right now for businesses that were in business and profitable in 2019. So that's actually through the state of California, a California uh, rebuilding fund program is what it's called. And that's for existing businesses. Our regular program that I mentioned up to 100,000 is gonna be for pure startup businesses as well. So if you have any doubts about what program you might be eligible for, just feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk with you about the options. Thank you. Thanks, Juliet. What about you, Fred? You're on mute. Good morning, everybody. My name is Fred Crispin. I'm Senior Vice President with United Midwest Savings Bank. We're a nationwide top 10 SBA lender. Uh, I manage the small loan division for the bank nationally out of Panama City Beach, Florida, uh, providing working capital for startup and existing businesses from 20,000 up to 150,000 under the SBA 7A program. Fantastic. And Mr. Pete. Hey, good morning, everybody. Pete Deegan, I'm with Glenspark. Uh, we basically help businesses, small and medium size, get financing for different types of equipment and working capital when their bank isn't able to facilitate that for any number of reasons, whether that be credit, uh, maybe buying some odd end equipment that doesn't fit their box from a collateral perspective, um, or even just, you know, working capital situations where we're able to maybe leverage some of your other assets, get creative, really tailor something to you and, you know, ultimately get you back in good standing, good relationship with that bank kind of grow with you. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks, Pete. And what about Melissa? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Melissa Martinez Cresser. I'm with Wells Fargo Bank. I support the San Diego County area but I have the ability to serve um, across the country. Um, we help small business owners in this particular area. We do support middle market customers. Um, some of the services that we help with are conventional financing. Um, we're able to go in second position with a equity loan or an equity line. We offer unsecured services like lines of credits and credit cards. Um, we also leverage the SBA. Um, we have the 504 that can, we can work with and the 7A. Thank you very much. Thanks, Melissa. And Miriam. Hi, Danny. Hi, everybody. So yeah, my name is Miriam. I'm with CDC Small Business Finance. And CDC has been around for 40 plus years. We're a nonprofit lender. Um, and we've focused on helping startups, um, African-American, Hispanics, um, anyone that's in a low or moderate income area. So basically anyone that a bank might or a traditional lender might not typically be able to help. And I have been in the industry for almost 20 years. <laughs> it's a long time. Um, and I love helping small business owners accomplish their, their dreams of growing their business or starting a business. Fantastic. Thanks, Miriam. And last but not least, DeWitt. Hi, everyone. I'm DeWitt Dudley. I'm a SVP with Pacific Premier Bank and our San Diego commercial banking team. I've been with the bank over five years and specialize in all aspects of commercial lending from lending to businesses, real estate investors, developers. Uh, we have loan programs for business owners that start as small as 5,000 and go all the way up north of 100 million. Loan purposes include everything from working capital, so your revenue is growing really fast, you need working capital for payroll, for expenses, for overhead. 
Uh, could also be loans for equipment, for expansion, for real estate acquisitions, business acquisitions, partner buy-ins, buyouts, and project-based finance. Thanks. Thanks, DeWitt. Appreciate that. So I want to kind of get through a couple other questions. So you can see we have a, a diverse different types of lenders. And I think that's one of the critical messages we have with this, uh, with this regular monthly meeting is there's a lot of different kinds of lending that's out there and where your small business is in terms of its life cycle, uh, the size of your business, the type of your business or things like that. There's gonna be different, uh, different types of lenders that are great lenders for you. And so that's why we have uh, this fantastic panel. So I think in terms of a, an initial question I wanna ask you is what are, what's the first step that a business should take when they're, they're seeking capital from your organization. Uh, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and start with you, Melissa. Thank you. Um, well, I think the first step would be to connect with SBDC um, so you can create a plan. I think having a really good understanding of what the objective is, um, the financials that will be required. Um, so really making sure that all of that information is gathered up front. And so when you're approaching the lender, you really know what the request will be. Um, I think that would be a really good first step. Fantastic. And what about you, Pete? Yeah, besides uh, obviously starting with the SBDC is uh, really just having an open conversation with us about your needs, <clears throat> where you are, and uh, you know, basically starting an application. For, for us, we don't do a hard credit pull, so really just a one-page app takes you five minutes to fill out, and same day, usually, we can have some feedback to you. Awesome. And what about you, Juan? Um, you know, just uh, getting getting your, your financial information lined up, uh, finding out what's going to be required, um, and uh, getting a good understanding with the lender as far as what uh, what it is that you're looking to do, and, and, and make sure that we match up that, that need with, uh, with the service that we have to offer. Fantastic. And Fred? Pretty much the same as everyone else. Uh, get with the SBDC, make sure you know exactly how much you need to borrow, uh, what your plan's gonna be. With us, it starts with the loan application. It's a credit scored program. Uh, so complete the loan application that they can download from our, our website uh, that gets loaded into a platform that pulls your credit, takes everything about your credit and your, your business, runs it out to Fair Isaac, runs it through a model and kicks back a score. And it's a pass fail system. So we can usually approve the initial credit same day we get the loan app. So it's pretty quick. Awesome. What about you, Juliet? I definitely think it's really important to connect with the SBDC counselor just to have that one-on-one -on -one experience, um, you know, and echoing what everyone else is saying, because as lenders, that shows us that you're taking the steps to prepare yourself and you're not just coming into the loan process blind. Um, and I think once you do that and get your financials in order, having a conversation with myself, like I mentioned, so I can be able to see which program you'd be eligible for and then invite you to apply would definitely be the first step. And in that initial conversation, we can go through the list of documents to make sure that you have everything ready um, so that once you fill out the application, it's a very quick process. Fantastic. And DeWitt. Um, so similar to everyone else, I would say start with the SBDC, speak with a counselor, uh, get a good understanding of the bank's requirements, the lending guidelines, know your personal credit score because the bank may want to know ballpark where your credit score is. Um, and then after that, gather all relevant docs that the bank's going to require, taxes, financial statements, bank statements, uh, maybe a business plan if, if uh, it's an early stage business. And the last thing that, that I would suggest is after that, make sure you speak to the right person at the bank. So all of the panelists, they're, they're the right people in their organization. You know, if you're looking for a loan and you're talking to the wrong person at the bank, you might get routed around, talk to three different people before getting to the right person. So just make sure you're speaking with the actual lender, um, you know, because that way you're at least a little bit closer to the, the person or people making the decision on your loan request. Fantastic. And you, Miriam? I'm going to take it a little bit more basic. I'm going to talk a little bit about, I think for any lender and specifically definitely for when you talk to me, I, I definitely will be asking you uh, some basic questions that 
Um, I know any lender always appreciates that you have that information. So um, you want to have thought through, you know, if you have a startup, what your total project cost is going to be. In other words, how much money do you need to borrow? Um, you want to have that pretty concrete or close to concrete. And of course, they can always come and work with SBDC if they need help with projections or a business plan. Um, but that's a basic question. So if you come to me and you ask, hey, I, I you know, I'd, I'd like to get a loan. I want to start my business. And one of my questions to you is going to be, okay, how much money do you need to borrow? And if you say, what is your max? And I say 250 and you say, that's what I want. I want the max. Um, and it doesn't, so you're just saying you want the max, but you really don't know how much money you need. That doesn't give you a lot of credibility right off the start. <laughs> so either know that information or, you know, go with a business advisor at SBDC that can help you figure that out, but have that information for sure. Another good thing to remember is Credit Karma. It it's free. And if you don't know what your credit score is, um, you should have an idea of what your credit score is. So you don't want to go to like five lenders and get your credit pool pulled by five lenders because that will, you know, most likely or could potentially, um, you know, when you get possibly to that fifth lender that can, you know, let you borrow money for your business, at that point, your credit score might be so low that you might get declined. <laughs> so know your credit score, avoid that. Um, you know, if there's someone on this panel um, that you're interested in chatting with, I mean, just have that conversation with, with them and know what your credit score is ahead of time. Um, and also know what you need the money for. So, you know, we're going to ask you not only how much money do you need, um, but we're also going to ask you, what do you need it for? You know, so you should say, you know, I don't know. You shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. You should say, I plan on expanding my business in the next couple of months. I plan on hiring people. So I need working capital. So um, that that would say, I would say, you know, anybody that you talk to here would want to know at least those three basics. Um and then as far as in our process and what it looks like, it would look like either calling me or emailing me so we can schedule a time to talk. It'd be like a 20 or 15 you know, minute conversation to see um, if I am help, able to help you. If I'm not, I'm, I'll probably refer you to someone on this panel, <laughs> including SBDC. And, um, and if I am able to help you, I will send you an application. I don't wanna waste your time. I don't wanna waste my time if you don't qualify. So I only send applications after we have a conversation. And then depending on your use of proceeds, your loan can be done in three weeks or in two months. So I think that pretty much covers it. Well, thanks, Miriam. Absolutely. So, you know, these are some different critical things in terms of some of the first steps. And so, but also as I kind of talk, you know, and you can see the, the, the different ways, but a lot of this stuff is very similar. But uh, the next question I want to ask is kind of what, you know, what types of small businesses does your, do your programs fit best for? And that includes like the life cycle of the business. So do you work with startups and, you know, and businesses in their first two years? established small businesses, maybe businesses that have more equipment or things like this, and kind of talk briefly about that. So I know Fred, here's a super clear, so we'll start with you. Yes, we provide uh, financing for startups, uh, probably 90, 90 plus percent of the loans that I fund on a monthly basis are pure startups, meaning the day we fund that loan is the day they're opening their doors to start selling services or widgets or whatever they're going to do. So we're not afraid to do startups um, under the SBA program. Fantastic. And, uh, and DeWitt, what about you? What are some of the, you know, life cycle or types of businesses? So we cover pretty much every stage of a business's development um, from the early stage where they have a 12 month track record and are applying maybe for their first line of credit or their first SBA loan, uh, all the way to mature middle market businesses that have been around 10, 20, 30, 40 years uh, that are borrowing millions of dollars. So we don't really focus on startups. So if it's a business that has less than a 12 month track record, those companies, we can bank them, but it's very challenging for me to lend to them. Um, so I would say a minimum 12 month track record, that's where the lending starts with my bank. And really once you get to a two year track record, that's where your lending options will open up. Um, so if it's less than 12 months, the maximum that I could lend is probably 50,000. If you have more than a two year track record, 
and at least one year tax return. So in other words, you've been around for two years, you have one tax return or one business tax return, uh, then I could lend up to 500,000 uh, with a really easy two page application. Um, and then over 500,000, three years in business. Fantastic. And Julia. We lend to peer startup businesses as well as existing businesses. Um, as I mentioned, we have two programs right now. The COVID relief program is going to be for businesses that were in business and profitable in 2019. And that one is a 4.25% interest rate. And then our regular program is peer startups, um, pre-revenue, as long as you have a business plan with one-year financial projections. And then we do also lend to businesses that are considered high, higher risk in the industry. So like a startup restaurant, a startup food truck, a startup gym, um, any sort of transportation business we can work with. So we do have the ability to lend to higher risk industries. Fantastic. And Juan, what about Banner Bank? Ideally, Daniel, we'd like to see two years. Um, we've done less in the past. Uh, usually it's someone who has experience in the industry, say an architect that's been in the business for a long time and now they're branching out on their own and they've been in business somewhere between 12 months and 24 months. Um, we've done that, uh, but I, ideally we, we'd like to see a couple of years under their belt. Fantastic, and Pete. Yeah, I would say that uh, we, we work on both ends of the pendulum, really. We don't really work with startups, but in those first, you know, we'll say one to five years, those businesses that are essentially just growing too fast for the bank to really work with them. Um, like a good example of this might be a manufacturing facility that's been around for two years and all of a sudden they're just, they've exploded with business. They're doing a couple hundred thousand a month. They need cash on hand, they need equipment, this and that. But from a bank perspective, they're, they're just too fresh. Maybe they only have one or two years of business. That's somebody that would fit well for us. And on the other side of it, the more established businesses, um, I think we kind of work more in conjunction with their bank when there's a situation, for instance, where they just can't be helped. So an example of that might be a trucking company whose bank provided financing for the first 10 trucks. And they're saying, you know what, we are tapped out, can't do any more for you. That's where Let's Park comes to play. Or maybe they're trying to buy a truck Bank doesn't like the mileage on it, or they don't like this and that. They don't like a lot of things, so that's uh, that's kind of where we can help. Uh, recently, we actually helped a local bakery in San Diego with multiple locations. They've been very well established, but they were buying an odd end piece of equipment, kind of a, a CNC laser feeder for cakes. Um, so the bank really wasn't interested in repossessing that or keeping that as a collateral on a five-year loan. That wasn't a problem for us here in the company. Awesome. And what about you, Miriam? What about CDC Small Business Finance? Yeah, so we lend to startups, as I mentioned, over 50% of our loans are startups and then acquisitions as well. I'm seeing a lot of those. Um, and then, you know, if you're an existing business owner as well. So the use of pro proceeds that we lend for is anything from working capital to um, equipment, to tenant improvements, to debt refinance, um, inventory, anything of that sort. And um, also as far as what we consider a startup, a startup could be considered, um, you know, as, as someone on the panel said, you know, we, we give you the funds so that, you know, in the next few weeks or days, you can open your business. So all you have is your business plan and projections, um, or it can be you're in month one or month two, or I've had clients that are in month six or seven and they realize, oh my goodness, I don't have enough working capital to keep this going. Uh, and they have come to us um, and we're able to lend to them. Um, and that actual example I'm telling you is a client that was, um, that opened a gym and realized he didn't have enough money about six, seven months in so so yeah so we we also lend to high risk you know anything in the food industry gym and um fitness industry as well um we're pretty much open to anything uh we do sba sba loans so we do have to cut it off at uh, adult industry or marijuana businesses fantastic and melissa what about wells fargo so at Wells Fargo, we are able to lend to startups. Um, we have a special division called Practice Finance that serves um, dentists, veterinarians, optometrists, and MDs. 
Um, so we can do startups there. Um, we can also do acquisitions through our SBA. Um, typically, if you started your business, it does take a couple of years to be profitable, which is why um, during the first two years, it could be a little difficult to obtain credit um, with like our unsecured products, like lines of credit or credit cards. But if the business is profitable, um, going into the second year, it's something we can definitely look at. In addition, um, we do do investment um, we do finance investor real estate. So um, not only do we do under user, but we can do investor real estate. And again, we can go in second position with our commercial lines of credit and equity loans. Um, so we have many different um, services that we can offer, um, many different uh, uh, lending tools that we can leverage. Thank you. Fantastic. So again, like I said, there's, you know, it's important to recognize where you are at with, with the life cycle of your business and you know, also what's going to fit best for you in all different types of situations. And so in a lot of ways, that's you know, where we come in at the Small Business Development Center. So we have a, a team of expert advisors, all at no cost to you. Um, Lynn's put the information in there on how you're able to reach out to us in the chat. And so we're able to kind of help guide you through some of that process. So um, now I want to shift gears just a little bit, but I think it's still very related. I mean, obviously, we've just come through the pandemic, right? I mean, at the top of the top of the program, we talked about pandemic reliefs. Uh, in particular, uh, Lucy from the, the Small Business Administration talked about some of the updates and things like that. And so obviously, there's a lot that's happened with the pandemic for small businesses, and certainly even with your own institutions. And so uh, how are you treating businesses differently? Or how has your organization changed some of its operations uh, related to, you know, things that have happened maybe with the pandemic. And why don't we go ahead and start this time with you, Miriam? Well, we also still have our COVID um, loan as well. It only goes up to 50,000, but it's a, it's a fixed loan uh, for five years um, and it's a 5%. So it's still a pretty good loan. Um, and we do go by your 2019 tax returns um, and because you know of the pandemic. So if you're still suffering from COVID and you need a small amount of capital, um, we still have that loan. As far as in the pandemic and other areas, I mean, honestly, we, we are, heightened credit for you know all of our industries has almost gone back to what it was pre-COVID um, the only ones that we of course still have our eyes on are you know restaurants or anything in the food industry as I mentioned or fitness those were still have a little bit of heightened credit but honestly it, it kind of goes back to our normal underwriting which is unlike a bank underwriting which is um, really more of does it make sense that the client um, you know can run their business and be successful at it and if they can prove that to us and they have at least a six 20, you know, credit score, um, and they, you know, have the ability to repay us back with their business, um, then we're still lending. So um, as far as in COVID, I mean, I only see in 2022, our um, guidelines even smoothing out, getting a little bit easier, softer than before. Fantastic. What about you, Fred? How have things, have things changed much? The only change that happened for us was it taught us how to do things remotely. Uh, you know, our whole operation is electronic. Um, we've got processors, closers, underwriters uh, that don't necessarily have to be in the office anymore to do their job. So that, you know, that's been a good thing. Outside of that, really nothing changed from our lending perspective other than uh, we probably take a little closer look at what's the long-term viability of a of a business in the case of a pandemic or some other uh, situation that comes along. Fantastic, thanks Fred. And DeWitt, since you obviously work with more existing businesses, I'm sure you know there's been some process of different things that you're looking at. So how are things different there Pacific Premier? So on, on the lending side, the bank has really expanded a, a number of programs, not only to make it easier to access credit, but also to make the size of credits easier to access. So in other words, before the pandemic, we had a small business loan program that would go up to 250,000 with a two page application, um, year to date financials, couple months of bank statements. So you could apply for a quarter million with a two page app, couple bank statements, year to date financials. After the pandemic or currently, the program has been increased to 500,000. 
So now with the same two page application, you can apply for up to 500,000. And it's the same, same kind of credit guidelines, credit requirements, uh, but instead of uh, 250 being the, the maximum in this program, now it's 500. Um, LTVs or loan to values on real estate, construction, bridge loans have all been increased. Uh, LTV, that just stands for loan to value. So think of it as the loan amount, as the uh, numerator, and the value of the property as the denominator. Um, so those we typically, before the pandemic, we might have been at 70, 75% on conventional loans. Uh, now we're up to 80%. So if you're a developer that's building a couple nice houses somewhere in San Diego, before the pandemic, we would have done a loan maybe for 60, 65% of the total project cost. Now we're going all the way up to 80%. So it's just a testament that the bank is actively lending. We want to do more loans. We're looking for new loans. Um, so yeah, after the pandemic, we're more, uh, more aggressive than ever to, to put new loans on the books and get new clients. Fantastic. Thanks, DeWitt. What about you, Pete? I mean, how are, how are you handling things differently? Um, I guess from like an underwriting perspective, I'd like to think we're, we're a little bit more hands-on in the approach um, versus maybe a few years ago when it was a little bit more, you know, calculated based on, okay, what does our tax return look like? What do the banks look like? What does our credit look like? Now for us, I mean, quite honestly, a 2019 and a 2020 tax return, it just it tells me not really much about what your business is because 2019, we're living in a different world now and 2020 was, you know, all upside down. So there's not much information there that's really valuable for us. We want to know how did you pivot? How did how did you handle this? And what does it look like moving forward? For example, maybe that'd be uh, a commercial cleaning business that's been around for a few years that decided after the pandemic when everyone left their office, hey, they switched to residential and we're killing it now and everything's great. And but it completely pivoted the business uh, for the previous five years. That's those are the kind of stories. And, and that's how you really want to underwrite um, you know, any, any kind of files. The only thing that's really still in a touchy area is, is the food industry still is, is uh, you know, if you're not very well established, meaning five plus years, it is, it's hard to get an approval put together in that, uh, that industry. Other than that, though, everything looks, you know, like it's opening up and, and all the programs seem to be getting back to normal. Awesome. And Juan, what did things change there at Banner Bank? Again, you, you all work with more established businesses. How has how's that changed things up? Well, I, I think that uh, we realized that during the whole uh, the whole process, there were still segments of the of the economy that did very well, and uh, and so um, things were a, a little more conservative. But then uh, that turned around probably about a year ago, um, especially for those that need credits, the smaller credits, um, you know, less than a hundred thousand. We used to have an application only process during the peak of the COVID that was at about 50,000 max. And now that's been increased up to 100,000. So for those that, that are on at that um, end of the spectrum there, um, looking for capital at, at that level, um, we only require an application for those. So um, so so as it's been said, things are starting to, uh, to, to feel a little more normal. Fantastic. And, and Juliet, what about you all there at Accessity? What's changed? Um, honestly, kind of to echo what Fred said, we learned that we can all go remote <laughs> and uh, work from home. So that's honestly been the biggest change. We've always been an organization that takes a lot more risk um, than traditional lenders as an alternative lending organization. So we haven't really changed our underwriting process. I would say the only thing that's changed is we actually lowered our maximum interest rate during the pandemic in the last two years, which is kind of ironic because um, we just wanted to be able to be in a resource for more small businesses. Um, and then I would say with our COVID lending, we have a really high guarantee on those loans. So those loans are, are very flexible. So I would encourage any of you, if you were in business in 2019, to reach out to me about that program. Again, it's called the California Rebuilding Fund Program. Um, they put a deadline on it for June and, um, you know, it, it's a program that's been going on for over a year and a half. So they're really trying to get the funds out to businesses. So big plug for that program. 
Um, but year to date, we've actually done over 11 million, um, our organization alone in COVID relief lending in the last two years. So just a um, really big number to be able to say, you know, we were able to help this many businesses with 11 million in COVID lending. Um, and that's all, all low interest lending. So no big changes, but definitely some big accomplishments. Thanks, Juliet. And what about Wells Fargo, Melissa? How, you know, again, more established businesses and certainly with a larger institution. What, what are some lessons learned or changes? Um, well, for us, uh, we during COVID, we did restrict our lending capabilities to our investors. Um, we weren't doing, you know, state commercial lines of credit or equity loans in first or second position. So um, those services are back. Um, we're, you know, they're being requested and we're doing a good amount of that. Um, it, we are, you know, to many of the panelists point, we are doing things remotely now. So things are, um, I would say it's easier to do business because we're not having to be out on the field as much. And so we can cover a lot more ground um, being virtual settings. Um, in addition, we are also able to, um, look at 2021's financials and if a customer can really speak to how they pivoted they uh, made their modifications um, maybe with suppliers or whatnot um, and can tell the story as to why their bottom line you know is now positive instead of in the red um, that can help us be able to just again leverage those 21 2021 tax returns to be able to speak to getting an LOI out there for them. Um, in addition, I know that our brand, my branch partners, um, they are now providing credit to customers with visas. Um, and so that is something that is fairly new here within the last couple of weeks. Thank you. Fantastic, thanks, Melissa. All right, now I wanna change, it actually is my favorite question. So I love to hear success stories or kind of something, you know, a client you helped. I mean, you can certainly feel free to keep it, you know, relatively anonymous, but, uh, but a great story of a client that, that's been, you know, recently that you've worked with and seen some success out of. And, uh, you know, because I, I know there's always lessons that can be learned from that. So why don't we go ahead and start with you, DeWitt? Say that again for me. My audio cut out for a second. No problem. So this is uh, when we're talking about, yeah, this is the good one. This is talking about a successful client. Feel free to keep it, you know, anonymized, but, uh, but a great success you've seen recently. Sure. Well, there's quite a few so let me let me think there's one that's a small business uh, they've been around for three years and they don't have a line of credit they've been using credit cards for basically everything the business is in uh, kind of the the renovation space so they will um, after someone buys a home they'll help the homeowner to renovate the home they'll in some cases even lend the homeowner money to renovate the home with the intention of then the homeowner sells the home um, and creates you know, more equity or, or more of a profit. So this renovation company um, was with their current bank, only had like a 25,000 line of credit. Um, in 2020 and 2021, they saw their sales grow considerably because everyone's you know, buying and selling more homes over the past couple of years, renovating their homes. Um, so the company realized they need more working capital. They went to their bank. Their bank said, no, you don't have a long enough track record. Even though you've been in business for a couple of years, you need two years of tax returns. They only had a one-year tax return. And with our small business lending program to go up to previously to go up to 250000 now to go up to 500000 all you need is two years in business one year business tax return, year to date financials and a couple bank statements. And the company was referred to me. I took a look at everything, realized that there's enough cash flow or enough profit to cash flow the line of credit that they were asking for. Um, the business, you know, it's a viable business. They're gonna be doing lots of renovations this year, next year, you know, for the foreseeable future. Uh, they applied for a 250,000 line of credit uh, a week later, they were approved. A week after that, they're now becoming a client and signing loan back. So that was a good success story because it's someone that didn't think they'd be able to get it. And they ended up getting more credit with us than they actually initially thought they were qualified for. 
That's awesome. I love to hear these different stories. Uh, Miriam, you always have some good ones. You there, Miriam? Or are... Sorry, Sorry I'm here. <laughs> I apologize. Um, yes, so I have a client that's actually just funded a few days ago um, that uh, just worked in, in retail stores and did a little bit of management in his youth, but his dream was always to purchase um, like kind of like one of those hobby retail stores um, where they have like remote control cars and they fix remote control cars. And so that, that was his dream for a very, very long time. Um, and so a friend of his actually uh, decided he wanted to sell his business and um, he did try to go to traditional lender. They said no to him. Um, just, I, I don't think they really everything really matched up for what they were looking, but we were able to help them. Um, we thought the cash flow was great. Um, the credit was just, it was okay, minimal, but um, yeah, he, he was, he was really, really happy um, and ends up actually that he ended up being a friend of someone I've known for a very long time. So it just was a happy story all along. Um, I love when people um, get to acquire a business that they've always dreamt of acquiring. So that that's one of my, my favorite recent stories. That's fantastic. That's a great story, so I appreciate that. But what about you, Juan? We have a, uh, a client that uh, had been operating their business from the same location for about 20 years, and um, the owners of the property uh, uh, gave them the opportunity to, to, to buy it. And um, at the time, they, they had to get alternative financing, uh, which was expensive, and um, we're not talking a lot uh, in terms of dollars. It was probably about 400,000, but we were able to, um, to approve the financing and we're, we're real close now to closing that. So they're, they're happy because they're gonna be saving a lot of money. That's fantastic. What about you, Fred? Yeah, actually, we just had a call from a borrower. We funded his first loan, I think it was like in 2019, for an Ace Handyman Services franchise. Uh, he's been doing extremely well and wants to expand into additional territories, hire additional employees, uh, and we're working on that loan now for him. Uh, so so uh, basically a unsecured loan uh, because there's really no business assets to speak of there. Uh, and, and that type of business, but we're comfortable with that. Uh, a lot of our loans are basically unsecured. We take a lien on the business assets and that's it. So in this case, he doesn't have a lot of business assets, but we're able to help him. Oh, that's great. I love to hear that. Nothing like a client that's coming back and growing after everything. So that's always fun. What about you, Pete? I got an odd one. Um, this is a repeat client. This client is uh, based out of Montana, so we do blend in all 50 states. Um, and uh, he's buying a, a truck for his construction company. Long story short, because they're on the border, it's not odd for them to get something that you know is from Canada. And uh, we worked with him and the dealership through the granular process it takes to get a truck over the border then it sits in a lot for 30 days for some reason i don't know then reassigning the title to it and you know at the end of the day it actually just funded uh, i think yesterday but it was a three week no longer than three three weeks after it sat for 30 days um so yeah it we we kind of do some extra hand holding that uh, everyone is really appreciative um especially our customer that's why they keep coming back um another one uh recently was a, a gentleman in, in the florida who had some, some tax liens and some issues that just really didn't make him bankable, but he was around for a while. He's got a great business. He's a contractor, uh, just needs a skid steer for 50,000. We, we gave him a chance, a five-year loan, and, and he seems to be uh, very happy with it and looks to be a repeating customer. And we're happy we can help him out, start a relationship, even though he's got a little bit of uh, some blemishes on the file. That's awesome. Some great stories, Pete. Appreciate that. That is interesting. With definitely, a, it gets complicated when you're dealing with international things, and certainly we deal with that on the, certainly the U.S. Mexican border too. So, Melissa, what about you? So, in this current environment, uh, we're seeing properties just fly off the shelves. Um, so many clients are coming in with cash to purchase properties, and so recently closed a customer. Um, 
helped him with a commercial equity loan. We pulled cash out of that property. Um, he's leveraging that specific cash to purchase another property in the future as the opportunity presents itself. Um, and then I have another client, um, very similar. We actually did a line of credit for her instead of an equity loan. But for that particular client, she was um, looking to go ahead and do some improvements to her property so she can be able to um, ask for a better return um, from her tenants. So um, we went in second position on that particular um, commercial property. So a good amount of investment right now, investment um, commercial lending. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. And Juliet? I'm glad that you asked because this is actually one of one of my favorite clients um, that I've worked with in a while. And she's actually a funeral director. She's been in the industry for 25 years. It's something that I had never um, given a loan to a funeral director before, but it's also an industry that's never going away, um, unfortunately. <laughs> but she had been working for somebody else for 25 years. She wanted to start her own business. She actually applied with us back in July of 2021. And we weren't able to help her at that time because she had some um, NSF charges in her bank account. So not being able to show that she had you know, enough money in her account um, to pay her regular expenses. And so I, I coached her and I said, you know, we can't help you at this time, but this is what you need to do. Make sure you can come to me when you have three months of um, clean bank statements, and then we can look at doing the loan. And we actually just funded her last month. So in February. Um, so that was really exciting, not only just because I've never funded a funeral director before, and it's such a you, you know, unique industry and something nobody ever talks about, um, but also she had so much experience when I first talked to her. I just got, um, you know, that question we were telling you guys about how do you approach a lender? She had everything that you would want. She knew what she needed the money for. She knew how she was going to run her business. She had experience. Um, she just checked a lot of the boxes, and she was just a really easy person to work with, um, you know, we'll work with people who need a little bit more handholding, but she was just so, so genuine. And you could really tell that all over the phone. And I was just really happy that we were able to finally fund her. That's awesome. That is a great story. Definitely is a unique industry. So I appreciate that. So why I love this question is what you see is you see the passion and kind of the excitement that everyone has for being, you know, for helping with small business. And certainly that's also what we share at the Small Business Development Center at the SBDC. Uh, and again, be able to provide you those types of services. And we also thank, you know, the panelists and our sponsors. We're going to keep going with questions, but, uh, you know, from CDC Small Business Finance, Marble Bridge Funding, United Midwest Savings, Pacific Premier Bank, and Banner Bank are not that are on here. So next one I want to do, and, and this might uh, kind of wrap us up, is it's kind of two tips that you would give small businesses as we're kind of coming here to a close. And I know, we all, you know, this is always good. And, and some of you have some great tips for, for small businesses. And, and the, you know, a lot of you will share the same tips too. And, and that's just fine. So why don't we go ahead and start with you, Pete? I know you got them. Yeah, I always have the same one. It's really easy just to make <laughs> sure your online profile is all up to date because first thing we do when we get an application, believe it or not, we Google and we look up and when you see addresses, phone numbers on your secretary of state filing that don't match up or even just on the Google search. It's an immediate red flag. Now we have to stop, get on the phone with you. Wait, is this your address? Is this your address? Is that your phone number? Who is this guy? Is that an owner? Uh, clean up the online profile and then um, you know, consult SVDC first because they're going to just point you in the right direction because if you can't tell, there are quite a few of us alternative lenders and bankers here that uh, are all able to help, but they kind of know who would fit you the best. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. And what about... Uh... You, Melissa. I would say um, complete all the paperwork. <laughs> um, and if you have questions, ask your lender. So, um, more often than not, I you know email the application out and it's not completed. And so um, I definitely don't mind jumping on the phone to help someone with uh, completing the paperwork, but I think it's really important to take the time to read it thoroughly, make sure that um, all the lines are, are completed because it is important for us to really have a good understanding um, of the whole financial picture. And then in addition, um, take a look at your credit report before um, you know, going out and looking for credit. It's really important that you understand what's on your credit report. Sometimes things pop up that you might not be aware of. And so um, doing that would be really important um, for us to you know, jump into the next step. Thank you. Awesome, thanks, Melissa. What about you, Fred? 
Melissa just covered it. Get a copy of your credit report. Understand what's on it, uh, because a lot of times, like Melissa said, things will pop up that you weren't aware of that need to be cleaned up before you go see a lender. Well, here, Fred, I think Brock asked a good question. I'm going to have you answer that, and then we'll move to the next person. Just like, should new businesses be hesitant to share their financial information? The lenders want to pull credit right away. How would you answer that question? Well, ours is a credit score program. So yeah, the first thing we're gonna do, it all starts with that, that, that credit score through the Fair Isaac Small Business Scoring Model that we use and SBA now uses them behind me. Uh, I've been using that model since 2003. So it's very predictive of what a business, uh, the success of a business, uh, whether it's a startup or existing. Fantastic, thanks Fred. And Juan, what are a couple of tips you'd be able to share? Well, um, if there's any surprises, let's let's put them out on the table and let's talk about them, whether it's, uh, you know, if it's collateral related, if it's a property, if there's a lien on there, they know uh, it's there. Let's uh, let's find out what the story behind that is. And same thing for credit. If they're aware of something happened in their past and, um, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'd like a letter of explanation just to, to see what would happen there. Thanks. And Julia. Uh, two tips I would give is if you're a startup business, don't quit your job um, because you need to have a source of income to pay the loan back while you're getting your business started. So I say for a lot of people laughing, it's not, it's not common sense to not quit your job. You know, you're like, oh, I want to focus fully on my business. And, you know, that's great. But that's great if you're looking for an investor. If you're looking for a lender, you want to be able to show that you have the money to pay that loan back. Um, and then I really want to emphasize on coming prepared to your lender, you know, what everyone else is saying, have your financial documents in order. Um, Brock, no, you do not have to be um, hesitant to share and, and be open with the lender about your, your financial situation and your numbers right away. Um, some lenders might pull your credit right away, but you know, some wanna talk with you a little bit more um, on the front end. And then if you're a startup, having a startup, um, I'm sorry, having a business plan. A lot of people tell me, oh, my business plan's up here. Well, you, we need that business plan on paper so we can see what you're thinking and you know how you're planning on operating your business and being successful. So really just getting your things in order, meeting with the SBDC, having that one-on-one -on -one partnership with them as well um, is really important. So those are my two tips. Awesome, thanks, Juliet. What about you, Duet? Um, Well, I would start off by saying I second what, what Juliet said about being willing to share financial information. So if, if someone calls me on the phone today and says, oh, I'm, I'm interested in getting a loan, I'll usually cut right to the chase and get into the financials and ask them, well, what was your top line this year? What was your bottom line this year? What was your net income last year? And I'll give them a quick answer over the phone. Yep, this sounds like you should be able to support a $500,000 line or a million dollar term loan. But if someone calls me and I say, you know, what, what was your net income last year? And they say, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to, I have to call my CPA and find out. It's like, well, you don't know how much money you made last year? Well, well give me a ballpark. What ballpark it? Did you make a hundred grand? Did you make a million? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. And that's usually not, not a encouraging indication that they have their financials together, they're on top of the numbers, they know exactly how much money they made. So the, the general tips that I would say, and I'm, I'll start with one that I, I haven't given in the past. Um, so have all of your entity docs and all of your corporate filings up to date. So one place that I'll, when, when I speak to a business, one of the first places I look, um, aside from Google, you know, I will Google the business and see what I can find out, but I'll go to the Secretary of State website. So the California Secretary of State website, type in the business name and search to see, okay, do they have their articles filed? Are they up to date? Do they have their statement of information filed? Is it up to date? Um, in some cases, if a business has not paid, let's say it's an LLC, and they haven't paid their $800 franchise tax board LLC fee, then they might have a suspended status on the Secretary of State website. So go on the Secretary of State website, make sure that all of your filings are up to date, make sure your taxes are all up to date, make sure your past financials are up to date. And lastly, I would say just be prepared to share your story 
with the lender and lenders, we, we're numbers people. We live in the world of ratios, numbers, historical performance. So the more information you can share with us that speaks our language, which is ratios and numbers, the better, you know? So when you're, you're basically like pitching a lender on, here's why it makes sense to lend my business money, share as much numbers as you can. You know, it makes sense to lend us money because we've been around for three years. We made a hundred grand our first year, 500K our second year, a million the third year. Our profitability has increased by 15% year over year. The growth is sustainable. We'll continue growing like this. And we could grow by even more if we had a bank partner that would lend us a million bucks. That, that's a much more compelling story than the other company that calls and says, well, I know I want to make more money. How much can you lend me? It's like, well, I don't, I don't know, maybe none, you know? So if you have that story and you communicate that story with numbers, it, you'll probably have a much better outcome with that lender than the person that calls and says, you know, what's the most you could possibly lend me? I've never, I've honestly, in, in 10 plus years, I've never funded a loan to one person that calls me and says, do it. What's the maximum amount you can lend to me? Because so, lenders will always say, well, how much do you need? What is it, what is it going to be used for? So have that story in mind. Have all your entity docs, corporate filings, financials ready to go. And you know, always loop in the SPDC first because you'll you'll just get a wealth of information and be leaps and bounds ahead of the next person that probably will just pick up the phone, call the lender directly, and you know ask the, the foolish question, what's the maximum amount you can lend me? So those, those would be my tips. Awesome. Thanks, DeWitt. And what about you, Miriam? Well, I would say my first tip would be to be very honest um, with your lender um, about, you know, if you had a bankruptcy, um, you know, if you have, you know, a, a tax lien, you know, anything that you know might maybe compromise your chances of getting lo a loan. You want to be completely honest and, you know, right up front when you're talking to lenders because there are lenders even just here. There's all sorts of lenders, you know, and, um, you know, some are more stringent, some are not, and we all know each other. So, you know, just be honest so that you don't waste your time and our time. We will refer you, you know, to SBDC or to another lender, um, but let us know up front. So we don't want to find that out after you've spent like all this time applying, we've reviewed your deal, and then to come back and say, well, you know, we, we can't because you have bankruptcy. And so, um, you know, just be upfront about that. The other thing goes back to what I mentioned before, be prepared before you talk to a lender. So, you know, know what your credit score is, know how much money you need and know what exactly you need it for. All lenders want to know those things. <laughs> um, and then um, my last a comment was just to Brock would be if you are a little intimidated about, you know, giving a lender your, your, you know, information up front or more, your, it sounds like you might be concerned with getting your, your credit pooled by several lenders. What you want to do is have conversations. So what you don't want to do is apply online because your credit will automatically be pulled. What you want to do is maybe take some of our information from the people here that you've heard from and SBDC because they know what we offer as well. Um, and either make an appointment with SBDC, they'll refer you to the right person that fits your situation or talk to a couple of us and just have a conversation. And then after you can, you know, talk to two or three people and evaluate who you think might be a best fit for you, then go ahead and apply. And then yes, your credit would be pulled at that point. Awesome. Thanks very much, Miriam. And we really appreciate our, our panel um, as we wrap up and then we'll, we'll be able to conclude with uh, Jordan. He was able to join us from the County Assessor's Office on tax updates real quick, but I want to thank uh, Juan Garcia from Banner Bank, uh, Fred Crispin from United Midwest Savings, uh, Juliet Teramine from Accessity, uh, Keith Deegan from Lenspark, Melissa Kresser from Wells Fargo, DeWitt Dudley from Pacific Premier, and Miriam Baltus from CDC Small Business Finance, uh, many of who which are our sponsors, uh, you know, which is CDC Small Business Finance, Marble Bridge, United Midwest Savings, Pacific Premier, and Banner Bank. And so certainly thank you for all of that. So I'm going to throw it here to, uh, to Jordan real quick uh, for a couple of uh, real quick updates. So let, let him do it, and then he'll, he'll bring us on out. Thanks, Jordan. Good morning, Danny. How are you doing? And good morning, uh, SPDC family. 
Uh, always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I got to say, everybody on this call is in such a great advantage. You're already going to be way more successful for having connected to SBDC. Uh, you know, as the last speaker just said, the numbers matter. And uh, uh, Danny, uh, you know, the numbers are real and your success story. So part of the success and the resources that the SBDC brings forward to you is connecting you with our office. Our office is the assessor, reporter, county clerk. I'm your taxpayer advocate for San Diego County. And my job is to help you. When things happen, uh, like they did to me this morning, and I appreciate your patience with me, you kind of adjust, right? You're a small business owner. Not only are you the leader of a, a company, but also you are the innovator and you can react and make changes and move quickly. And so uh, when you get stuck in government, if things happen, because I know uh, the wonderful business is on with us this morning. Baba did not get into business to become a property tax expert or to know about the fictitious business name filing at my office or the uh, marriage license that he might need so he and uh, somebody else could qualify together. These are all the things that the challenges that get thrown at you on a daily basis. And I want to make it easier for you. And that's why I'm honored to be on the SBDC advisory board. So here's my pitch to you. If you have an issue, if you have a challenge, if you're stuck on that 800 number anywhere in government for more than an hour, call Danny, call the team, and we will get you there faster. We are gonna make it easier for you to do business not only here in San Diego, but in the state of California. So, uh, and, and the thing is, uh, and uh, Danny and the wonderful team can attest to, it always gets better when you call it, it never gets worse. It always gets easier. So uh, just, you know, there are online processes, learn them, know them. But when you get stuck, know that you have a resource, thanks to SBDC to help you make it easier. Fantastic. Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much, Jordan. And thank you for you all. Where you all have a fantastic weekend and uh, certainly take care. Thank you.